Hey everybody and welcome to another JASP tutorial. In this one, I want to quickly go over a change that was made in the factor analysis module, which serves as an update to that those previous JASP tutorials. I've done an exploratory factor analysis on the channel and I've also done a confirmatory factor analysis on the channel. So this new option is sort of a game changer as far as displaying and also interpreting your output. So this new feature comes with the current version of JASP 0.15. So that is what we're using. Now we're gonna open up some data through the data library. There's only one data set specifically for factor analysis that you can get through the data library. You might wanna use your own to show. And instead of using my own factor analysis data, which I've used in the past uh, because of comments of not being able to access that data because I can't share it or, I, or it's not my place to share it, uh, I'm just gonna use the data set from the data library. So clicking on the hamburger menu here and we're gonna to go to data library. And folder number six here is the factor analysis one and it's G factor, Charles Spearman's data of pupil school grades and sensory discrimination scores from the, his 1904 paper. Okay, so example JAS file uh, demonstrates the use of an exploratory factor analysis, as well as a principal components analysis, which I have not added to my channel uh, because I don't use PCA. So one thing that I'm going to do for this particular one that I, you know, don't do every single time I use a data library is instead of just opening the uh, CSV file by itself, I am going to open up the full JASP output file so it has all of the analyses done already because a change isn't change is just as an option. So we're going to go into the explore for, exploratory factor analysis. So here we are, are given our basic findings for the EFA. Um, and this is the table that I want to focus on, the factor loadings here. So we have factor one, and you can see that it goes from high to low, regardless of what these um, variables are. And then we have our uniqueness score uh, for the factor uh, items themselves. So what has changed? Well, it's under output options. So previously, you could specify your cutoff point. And um, in my video, I talk about how point four is generally a cutoff point. And um, it looks like there was an error. Cool. So I'm going to set zero again and see if it fixes. Hopefully. Ah, uh, fixed. All right, let's scroll up to point four, shall we? You can do it. Okay, great. So you can see that residuals light and residuals weight are now no longer in the table. So this was a previous um, output option. One new output option, though, is order factor loadings by factor size or variables. And so by default, it's going to order them in order of factor load size. So that's why Classics is up here at the top, because it's got a factor loading of 0.965. Now, if we just did it by variables, then this is going to put all of them. It's hard to tell what exactly it's um, basing these in what order. Like, I, I'm not entirely sure what variables here means, unless this... Pitch, light, weight, classics, French, English, and mathematics are the order that they appear in over here. Pitch, light, weight, classics, French, English, mathematics. Did I have that right? Yes. So it's ordered them in the column order. But of course, we want them to be by factor size because when we put this into a table, and especially if we had more than one factor, we would want to make sure that um, they show the good information at the top. And this is a great addition to the factor analysis module. Whether it's EFA or a CFA, you can do both here, which is Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And so that is the new feature for factor analysis in JASP. If you like this video, consider leaving a like. If you like this content, consider subscribing for more JASP tutorials. Thanks for watching. Bye.